it was pretty hard for me to get into there and I was like wow I feel like my life has become so hard and I felt so so um not really depressed I was kind of stressed I was like is this going to work out am I really going to make it am I really going to do this because everything was going south nothing was going according to my plan I literally never planned on being a radiographer. I even had no idea what radiography was all about. My life became so sour, like a lot of situations, a lot of um, dream crashes, a lot of things which were going on, like what's happening to my life. But being a radiographer has also helped me. I think it has helped me in being um, a better person. Hi guys, welcome to my channel in the lifestyle because Evelyn here is a girl and today is a random video. The story time on how I became a radiographer and a lot of things which went on in my life and so many decisions to make, so many decisions and uh, blah 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 every third time. So I never planned on becoming a radiographer, I just found myself to be one because of a lot of situations. So today is the story of my life story on how I became a radiographer, how I became one without a plan, right? So when I was in high school or secondary school, I had that mindset of becoming a doctor because that's the only thing that I really knew by then that this is one thing that exists. So I really knew that there is the, you know, there is the, the doctors you have to do medicine and all that. Not necessarily that I knew that you have to do medicine, I only knew that you have to do doctor course only so I had those expectations and I really wanted to become one I really wanted to be a doctor I really wanted to be wearing a coat and having a stethoscope despite not knowing what those guys go through right so that was me so when I completed my high school my high school results really crushed my dreams it really crushed my dreams guys like I got points which were so many, like there were a lot of points where I can't be accepted in medicine and those were 16 points, yeah, 16 points, unless if I remove a 1, I remain with a 6, then I can be qualified, I would be qualified, I was going to be qualified if I had 6 points, 6 points, 7 points, or oh, maybe 8 points. Who knows? So I was in point and that was my hard bracket of my dream. So when I started applying, I got rejected, not really rejected, but I was so unqualified in so many, um, many programs of uh, the university. So the first thing was that my dream was crushed of me becoming a doctor, it was crushed because of the points that I had. Then my mind was like, okay, let me just think of something like a course that is going to be within Ministry of Health because I had to do some consultations like okay if I am unable to do medicine due to my points what can I do next for me to reach where I want to reach for me to become a doctor then a lot of people advise me to say you need to be in the same field in the Ministry of Health you need to be in that field you do any course that is within that field then as time goes by you're going to upgrade you're going to advance then you get close to your dream and you're going to reach even though it's going to be a long cut so i was like it's okay i mean when i'm good <laughs> it's all right so when i went there i was when i was told that you have to do i have to do all those things uh i had no choice it being that i wanted to be at that uh like becoming a so when I went there, I was still looking for universities. So the first university I went to, I won't be mentioning the names of the universities, guys. So the first university I went to, it was a nice university. It was great and everything, but it didn't really qualify to what I was looking for. So I was looking for a very big, not really very, but at least a bigger place, a bigger area where you feel your mind get to feel that you are really uh, in college, you are really with a lot of friends and all that, like classmates, a lot of um, uh, big classes. That. So that was the thing that I was looking for. So when I went there, I was qualified to be in the ministry, in to do one of the courses which is in the Ministry of 
health there but the environment uh, didn't really really match with what i was looking for so i was like i mean i guess let's just leave it so i looked for a different place so that was the first university i lived there and then i also had the thought of going abroad right i thought of you know why not taking another step let's go to a different country so i tried to apply to some of the universities in different countries i tried morocco i also tried i tried to apply in morocco i also tried to apply in um let's see which other one which other one <laughs> Yeah, I tried to apply there, but I think I don't think it worked out. I don't think the process was done because I was somehow scared. It being that I had no one to um, to do some inquiries from to ask guys and how am I supposed to go about it? Or someone I can look up to to say, okay, this one did this. I can also do that. So I dropped the whole idea of going abroad. So I went to the second university. The second university, well. It was among the universities which I really wanted to go to. So when I reached there and I showed them my documents and all that, they were like, you qualify in these ministries, in these kind of fields, but not in the field which you want. And I was so heartbroken, guys. It was so heartbreaking. It been that everything that I want was there, but my results didn't qualify me to be in the field I wanted. So it was me, I was in the position where I have to sacrifice, um, either to sacrifice my dream, sacrificing my dream of being in the Ministry of Health, being in that field, I sacrificed that, then I fulfilled the dream of being at that university. Or I had to make a choice of sacrificing the, the, the university I wanted and going to a place, going in a field which I wanted. So. I had no choice. I had to leave the university and go to a different one. So I was unqualified for that one. Totally unqualified. Yeah. So I went to the third one. The third one, I went with a friend of mine. I remember going with a friend of mine. And for them, they told me to be going back each and every time to be checking if at all my my letter is processed and everything. I did the formalities, uh, formalities and everything. I left my documents there and then they told me to be going back, checking up um, the process, how far it is. Then I started doing that. I think they ghosted me. Yeah, I think they ghosted me because I went there for about two weeks, two to three weeks, checking up on the, the process. And they were, still, they were still telling me to say, you know what, uh, it's still in the process, come back tomorrow, come back next week. Come back, uh, come back next week, come back on a Friday, come back on a Monday. And I was like, you know what, just tell me the truth. I mean, what's going on? What's really going on? Am I going to be in or I'm out of this? Then, yeah, so it just happened that there was need of this. So there was need of this. I needed to do that for me to be able to find in that. And I was like, I have no money. I mean, I'm broke. I have no money and I'm not going to involve my parents in this because I know that there will be a lot of money which will be needed for school. So I was like, you know what? It's okay. God has got different ways. God has got ways. I'm sure this is his way of me not getting in this kind of university. So I left it and I, yeah, I left it. I went to a different one. That should be the fourth one. So the fourth one, I went there. It was just okay. It was just nice and everything was just so fantastic and I really loved everything. So when I reached there, I did the application and everything. Well, what I was told is that if I want to go in there, it means I have to pay everything in full in the first term, which I think this is what they do normally in all the universities. I only to find that the things that like everything, all the money and everything for just the complete money it was quite expensive and I didn't have that money. And at that university they don't even offer bursaries, so it was really hard for me to get into there. And I was like, wow, I feel like my life has become so hard and I felt so so um not really depressed, I was kind of stressed. I was like, is this going to work out? Am I really going to make it? Am I really going to do this? Because everything was going sour. Nothing was going according to my plan. 
till the last one which was college so the reason why i wanted to get into a university because i wanted to have a degree once i have a degree it will be very easy for me to advance and to do the things that i want which was medicine right i don't know if i still want medicine now so that was the reason that was the main reason why i wanted to go into a university so after that i went to i said, I said now with colleges so the first college I went to, I think that was, um, I, I just tried it once, that was Evening Horn. Immediately I entered Evening Horn, I loved the place, I loved how big it was. It isn't that big compared to some of the universities, but it's kind of, um, it's, it was according to what I was expecting. Like, okay, this is much better, this is okay, I think. With the situation I'm in right now, <laughs> I have no choice, this is way much better. So when I reached there at Indian Horn, I was welcomed and I really loved the warm welcome. It made me to have, um, it made me to forget about all the things that I went through for the past, how many months were those? Should be two to three months. So when I went there, after the welcoming moment uh, and everything, one of my friend's uncle, whom I met, so I had to open up to him to say, you know what? I'm looking for a course which is within Ministry of Health and which is going to accept me with these results that I have. Then um, I'm going to. It's it's what I want. It's what I want, and yeah, just a course where they put on lab coats, like they have to put on a white coat. So that was one of my qualifications of me choosing the career. I was like. Something that they are going to that they put on white coat when you're going for work and all that you put on your clothes and you're going for work. And he was like he was doing radiography and he was the best person to tell me about what radiography was all about and everything because he was doing radiography. So he introduced me to radiography. I had no much idea about what radiography was all about. So he told me to say radiography, um, which will which will really be a good one for you because um it, it deals with a lot of things, not just radiography, but all courses. When it comes to pharmacy, when it comes to um, lab technicians, when it comes to um, which other ones, the biomed, when it comes to um, um, which other ones, which other ones, CEOs and all that. Though there's no CEO, there's no clinical medicine at Indian Horn. So he was like, all these are so challenging, and they all have interesting things. But I will only share to you. Uh, my course, my program, because it's what I'm doing right now. So he told me about radiography and everything. And what he said was so mesmerizing. I was like, you know what? I think I'm going for this. It being that you have to wear coats. Um, there's also the patient duration. They are like the, the period you're going to stay with the patient isn't that long. It's quite uh, just a long duration. And I was okay with that because um, I don't really, really like spending a lot of time with patients because I easily get attached. Now imagine how many patients I can be attached to, right? So me happy, hearing about that duration, I was really, really excited and I was really happy. But that was then. Right now I can, it's an achievement. I can be able to uh, be with the patient for a longer period of time. Months. Yes. Yes. But yeah, any. I'm really comfortable to be with the patient for a longer period of time. By then, I was really scared. I was like, what What am I supposed to do next, right? But now, it being that I only have a short uh, duration to be with the patient, it was okay with me. And now, it's an achievement. I'm, I can be able to hold on to do that, right? So, after he told me that, I was really happy with it and I was really excited and I applied for it and I was accepted and I started my journey. So the reason why I'm sharing with you guys about this um, whole thing is that the first point is that God has got different plans for us. Our plan isn't God's plan. It's different, totally different. Then the second thing is that don't let whatever is in, whatever the situation that is going around you uh, define you, like define you or limit you, right? Don't let it uh, like the negativity dominion upon you so my negativities that i usually that i had when i was really um i was unqualified to from those four four if not five universities 
my negativities really made me to be down they made me to feel so unworthy they made me to feel like i'm nothing they made me to feel like okay now i'm a waste like i have nothing I, I, I have nothing to offer to the world i have nothing to offer to the world and to offer to myself so there's this book that i'm reading where i got this quote from that is um the power in is it uh, should be the power in positive the power in positive thinking that is by dr norman by dr norman vincent power should be yeah that's the one hopefully i've gotten the, the title for it so it's the one that i'm reading recently and the first the first chapter is talking about believing in yourself so when you believe in yourself it becomes very easy to wash out all the negativities right so those negativities that comes in your mind like am i going to do this am i going is this going to work out for me is this am i worth it am i really going to succeed in this career am i really going to succeed in this project that i'm about to do so those question marks and all those things really makes uh, really creates a very huge space in your mind where they are a little negative flowing in slowly by slowly till they settle down and till they accumulate all the space in you and you feel like you are nothing like you are an empty vessel right so yeah don't allow them put the positive energy even though you feel like okay this is not going to work but once you put the positive energy and you have faith that it's going to work out then it's going to work out so everything happens for a purpose. Never give up on yourself or on your dream, right? So God will make a way, will pave a different way which you are not expecting, right? Like for me, I wasn't expecting that I'm going to do a diploma and I wasn't expecting that I'm going to have 16 points when I was in secondary school. I was expecting myself to have at least one number that is going to um, qualify me to do medicine and all that. But, you know, it brought me to this point, into this place, which I'm so grateful of and I'm so happy that I still have this. So it's not about what, uh, it's not about the, the things that, the things that you're going through and to, they become like the negativity things in your life and you just drop everything and feel like nothing is working out. Everything is going to work out, it's just about time and also the situation at, in hand at that time, right? So the thing that you have to do is that keep on moving, keep on pushing. If it comes to financial crisis, there will be a way. Everyone, I'm the testimony, I'm the witness to the financial crisis. When I went to Evelyn Horn, in my first term, we, my parents did all the payment, like everything in full. Then in the next term, what we hoped for came to pass. I was on battery. So it was the less burden where the government was helping me with the tuition fees and everything. The tuition fees specifically, they, you know, my parents were doing other things while there's accommodation, they are uh, buying uh, the groceries, um, um, examinations and all the other necessary things that were needed. So go for it. If you're going to apply, apply and God will make a way. I, for one, I never knew that I'm going to be on bursary. I just went there with faith i was like you know what whatever happens happens i don't know what's going to happen but i put faith in god that everything will be well so everything will be well just give it a step give it a try and see how god is going to make the way for you right so this uh, this is the thing that i thought of sharing with you guys the story and hopefully this story is going to help somebody there hopefully this story is going to make someone to start up and Continue. Doesn't matter if you start with a certificate, with a diploma, with a degree, masters, PhD, whatever. It doesn't matter as long as you've studied your journey. You've studied. So here is the challenge. Shout out to everybody who helped me in this journey, and who are still helping me. So the person who introduced me to radiography, that is Mr. Kamal Francis, then there is Mr. Skasote. Mr. Skasote who helped me in learning ultrasound very much. Shout out to him. Then there is Mr. Daddy Sonkoma. There is Mr. Hamoni Wanza. Then there is Mr. Steve, Mr. Jeram, Mr. Shadri Kapinda, Dr. Kanga, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mshota, who else was? They are a lot of people. Mr. Chilua, Mr. Chilua, who is currently helping me in a very exciting examination. I'm going to show you guys once I'm able to learn and to do it on my own, right? Guys, I'm mentioning all these people so that you know that in what you are doing, you need a mentor. You need someone whom you can look up to. You need someone who's going to correct you your mistakes. You need someone who's going to tell you the do's and the don'ts and to tell you how the game is supposed to be played. You need someone who's going to be helping you to share the materials, to share the knowledge, to share everything. These people have really helped me in being shaped when it comes to my career and being able to open up my eyes to see like, okay, this is how it is, this is how this is, and this is how it's supposed to be, this is how it's supposed to move, and be able to have more light on the career, right? So you need to have someone who's going to help you, who's going to tell you um, 
how everything is because that person is already on the top so they are able to see the surface and you are on, at the surface you can't see the top you can see what's really happening around you so those people are going to be like the eye to you or going to direct you so you need someone who's going to help you for you to qualify for you to be um equipped when it comes to your career and everything right and also he's a lucky train thank you for watching and see you in the next video don't forget to subscribe to leave the comment as well and to ring the bell so that you get to receive to receive a notification for a new upload so see ya